welcome back to episode 65 of the Disorganized Wizard Club podcast. My name is Alex, and here's always with Cam. Hello. A newly appointed Dr. Adam Ben in the house. Hello. How's it feel? I did the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually like super anticlimactic. I don't know. So like for a- our listeners, Adam successfully defended his dissertation yesterday. And is now officially Doctor of Philosophy <laughs> is the is the title. Cam will also have a Doctor of Philosophy title in a, in a few years, sometime soon, hopefully. So, yeah, soon being <laughs> like five years, four, four or five years. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of an anticlimactic, actually, because um, you just sort of. I, I, I was kind of nervous, but the, you know, we talk about it. And you, you don't really make it to defense unless you your dissertation is going to be successful basically, or it's super okay. borderline and you screw and they kind of demonstrate in the oral that you don't know anything, but it has to be so bad for that to happen. Okay. And like the worst case is like major revisions, which is usually a couple paragraphs here and there. And then the other option is minor revisions, which are like you add a footnote and it can't be basically anything more than that is minor revisions. Like you maybe have to add a comma or a footnote. Like that's literally a, one tiny thing is considered minor revisions. And then the other option is pass with no revisions, which is basically, it rarely if ever happens because there's always like something, right? Like yeah. there's a formatting issue, just one tiny thing they want you to fix. Uh, so yeah, I pass with minor revisions. I don't even know what those minor revisions are. I'm waiting for my supervisor, but. Nice. Yeah, it was Congratulations. like. It was a long process. It was like three hours. Jeez. Of just sitting there getting grilled, you know? Yeah. About They ask you all these questions about your work and. Yeah, um, well, like, the only person who asked really difficult questions, though, is so, like, to ensure, I guess, the, you know, the quality of it, they send, when you defend a dissertation, they bring in an external examiner who's an expert in the field from another university who's supposed to be really hard on you and writes an external report about why they think it qualifies as comprehensive and original research, yada, yada, yada. And so, yeah, my external asked very difficult questions and was really engaged but some of the other questions were just like throwaways, you know, it just mm-hmm. felt like soft, like, yeah, softballs across the plate designed to make me look good, you know, yeah, like yeah. that was like how a lot of the questions felt. So, yeah, it was not bad, but his were tough. Like, I actually had to pause to think about them for a while, which is nerve wracking, right? Because you're like, oh, maybe they think I don't know anything, but I'm just trying to collect my thoughts for it. And I don't know how long I was sitting there thinking. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was just, but then I finished, went and got a beer with them, and then went home and fell asleep because I was so exhausted. <laughs> Because I was so paranoid about sleeping in <laughs> that I had been going to bed at like 9 30, 10 p.m. in the morning and getting up at 6 30, 7 a.m., even though my defense was at 1 30 in the afternoon, <laughs> just out of sheer fear of sleeping in or doing so. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, the night before, he's like, Cam, when are you going to sleep? I don't know, like two in the morning. He's like, okay, well, when are you getting up? Uh, 10. All right, well, if, when you get up, if I'm not up, definitely wake me up. Like, come into my room, hit me, like, wake me up. And I wake up at 10 and he's already like up and doing laundry and like his music going. He's been up for hours, like just. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I had like two hours to spare and I Ubered to campus, even though it's like a 15 minute walk. I was like, gotta go. <laughs> and then I just got there and just sat there. He's just yeah. anxiously waiting. Um, so, yeah, it, I don't know. It feels kind of anticlimactic, but it's nice to be done. It must feel amazing to be over. It hasn't sunk in yet because yeah. it's been less than 24 hours. Yeah. That since I've de- you know since we were recording this since I've defended so I, I it hasn't even sunk in yet I don't yeah. even it hasn't I mean just when I finished my undergrad it didn't really sink in until people went back to school in September I'm like man I don't have to do this anymore yeah I think I'm it done. sinks in as soon as you hit like a lifestyle change so it's because <laughs> like <laughs> no <laughs> right like yeah you, you it's been less than twenty four hours you still just like you know, played some games went to sleep like got some food. Like, I, I, the fact that I'm done my master's, like, still hasn't sunk in because nothing changed in my life. I'm still just going to school. Right, because you just started grad school right, again. Like, like, yeah, literally just... nothing changed. My days are the same, so it, that hasn't sunk in. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So I'm just sort of kicking it, doing nothing now. You know, I'm officially neat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not employed in education or training. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just filing for jobs and looking nice. for jobs and postdocs and trying to find a postdoc and all that fun stuff so i haven't been playing a lot of magic over the past week and a half or two uh, we missed last week but also i just because of this i hadn't been playing a lot but i did watch a lot of coverage mm-hmm. yeah so did i. I haven't had much time to play at all i've mostly just been playing online whenever i can but nothing i haven't played standard i haven't even thought about standard i played one standard fnm and adam and i did kind of like 
two halves of Unstable Drafts. I played a oh, game man. of Unstable and was like, this is Yeah, we drafted, miserable. played a game, and dropped, it's and miserable. then dr- drafted again to get the lands, you know? Yeah. And then dropped and left. Yeah. And dropped and left. Yeah. I really, I really want to do it at least once. It, what I don't like, I don't find it fun. Maybe other people do. Maybe I'm just an old Grinch. Like, and dude, not maybe I am, but I just, it's just not the same game. So I don't find it fun or interesting. It's not why I play Magic. So I just yeah. don't find it entertaining. Like, we don't play sets. Magic for fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Come on>. Yeah. <laughs> to the set's credit, though, there was like you know a different crowd that came out. There was like a couple more kids that came out, and they seemed to be having a blast. So like, the only reason I had fun was like the little kids that were there having fun. Yeah. Because like even my old grumpy self was like cheered by you know like it warmed my heart like so like shout out to evan barry a uh, local magic player who was there for the unstable draft. noted good guy yeah great guy um so this like kid like 12 13 year old kid opened a spike and he's like so spike like you, you can fetch a band card from like from outside the game yeah and he's like man i like got this spike and i took it because like you know i'm a kid i rare draft but like i don't have any cards to play with it i wish i could play it and then evan walks over he's like here you go and drops a stack of cards it's got like emerald cool gta strip mine like <laughs> yeah, yeah. and the kid just can proceeded to like kick cam's teeth in with a gta yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because spike is like two frexia mana too yeah you play it on turn two get to play a gta <laughs> it's just not close yeah so he was just like yeah, dumpstering people with band cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. So, uh, yeah, that was cool. And, like, the kids were just stoked about it. So it was sweet. Um, but I just, like, the games, like, I think it's because I played against someone who was, like, there to win store credit and was, like, dead serious about it, you know? It was, like, tack phase, you know? And, like, just super. And it was just, like, not fun. And yeah. I'm, like, this is, like, not a format that should be for prize, like. Cause it's not gonna feel good if you're playing for store credit. Like, no, no, yeah, definitely not. So I just like I played him game one. And I was like, you win, man. Like, I'm off it. I'm done, I man. just conceded and like went and watched Cam's game where he's getting his teeth kicked in by a little kid. <laughs> That's why I was like, I'm just gonna go watch this. Game. Dude, I was like, getting chirped. Like, oh yeah, and he was the chirps was were worse. Chirp, than how, but so I got stuck on two lands. I kept a two lander with some two drops and got yeah. stuck. Never drew a third land. And I had that card uh, called X that you can like put it yeah. in your opponent's hand. Yeah. So it was in my opponent's hand. And he's looking at it, and he's like, oh, I really don't want you to, like, Cassidy my stuff. Too bad you're stuck on lands and can't get wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, that's funny. Like, that was good. That is funny. Yeah. They were cool. It was all worth it, after all. Oh, well, getting those lands, I think they're sweet. They are sweet. Some people don't like they're them. Nice. I'm a big fan. I think they're I really am, cool. I am a big fan. I'm Not sure I like a... them more than uh, Unhinged, but... Wow, you're an idiot. Well... <laughs> unhinged are the worst. No. Yeah, we had this. I had this conversation with. There's literally we're surrounded by <laughs> large posters of the unhinged lands of one of each of the unhinged lands at, in this recording space. Um, I, I'm just not about them. I, I like. I've realized what it is though. I was talking to Evan about this, trying to figure out because he's a land snob. A lot of people are land snobs, and I am too. But I like lands defined by their borders. So my favorite lands are yeah, God, God, the ones with the ugliest borders. Are the unglued lands because they have like a cool border. I don't care about the art. I care well, about like the kind of well. Well, now that you're a doctor, maybe you should think about joining Doctors Without Borders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's on the spot, guys. On the spot, just off the top of my head. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't know. I like the unglued lands. I. I, mean, I think it's probably also nostalgia, right? Like they have the brown mud yeah. border, you know, from the old days. It reminds me of Urza times, <laughs> memory jars, you know. Uh huh. Also, you know, classic nostalgia card. Southern Alberta, pretty brown and dry sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Urza, GP OKC last weekend, modern, oh. just a good old stomping by Tron. You were so Karn. happy. Oh man! Just I pictures stoked. of Karn flexing <laughs> in the group chat, just <laughs> over and just looking huge. <laughs> yeah, Con Karn just came out and just dumpstered people all weekend in OKC. Three, oh yeah, three copies in the top eight, a bunch in the top thirty-two. Yep, man, it was and Tron's weekend. It was <laughs> Tron's weekend. It yeah, a lot a lot of big names came out with it too. Steve Rubin, Seth Manfield, who made it to the semis, I believe, playing yeah. Tron before he Green got Black Tron <laughs> before he got dumpstered by. The unbeatable Titan Shift deck that won the whole tournament. Do you guys remember on Saturday morning when we were talking about all the Tron? Because we were watching Tron just like stomp on people. Yeah. And I was like, well, there's an easy solution here to this Tron menace. Yeah. I was like, eight skate shift, eight, you know, eight eight prime time, right? You yeah. just play uh, Hour of Promise, whatever. Like, Falcon, they yeah. can't, they're not beating. You can't, you can't beat that deck. No, God, no. No. Lots of decks can't beat that deck. 
That yeah. deck beats Death Shadow. That deck beats lots of decks. That deck is crazy. Yeah. So that's one of the solutions. And wasn't it a mirror? Yeah, I think there was two copies of Titan Shift in the top eight and both made the finals. Yeah. That's like, a miserable mirror. That, I would imagine. That's a miserable deck. I played it. I've yeah. played it. I played it at tournaments. It's... And I, I've won those tournaments. I've played it, but it's not enjoyable. One, for of, me. The, like, one just, of the few times I played Modern, I played a, like an earlier version before Hour of Promise was printed. But yeah, like round one, I had to play the mirror. Just didn't matter what anybody did. Yeah. Yeah. Were, were they playing Hour of Promise even? I don't even know. In the I don't think list. these ones were. I, th- I think they weren't. I think they might have been on the like Bolt Plan main so they don't die to Storm right away. Yeah, it doesn't look like they yeah, are. Yeah, they are. They're playing Bolts so that they don't die to storm that's for sure like makes sense they just need to buy a turn right and then just kill them the next time Mm -hmm. that's why yeah lots of uh fun and interactive magic this weekend at okc lots lots you mean lots of modern (laughs) man every round it was just like oh who's getting dumpstered someone's getting dumpstered by storm someone's getting dumpstered by tron just one oh wait Next round, we got some Titan Shift, just Domster and more people. Like, I watched the whole GP, basically. I think you did, too, almost. I, I or a lot of whatever it. I could, yeah. And it just felt like every match was just so comically one-sided. Yep. And just so ridiculous. Like, it wasn't interesting to watch. It was just watching decks slaughter one another. Yeah. Um, except for there was a close match between a Storm player... And Eric Froelich playing Burn, where he made a bunch of Empty the Warrens. That was cool. That was a cool game. It was really close. Mm -hmm. And Affinity and Burn had a good matchup versus him as well when he was playing for 9-0 and Affinity 9-0 day one. Mm -hmm. But uh, apart from that, I mean, even Affinity, I don't think really showed up to this tournament, right? I think I saw one copy in the top 32. Yeah, not a good look. There's definitely one, maybe two. It's too interactive. It's too fair. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I mean, what a world. Not going fast enough. What a world, man, where, like, Affinity is too fair. Was was that the thing? Was Affinity too fair this weekend, or did were people just ready for it? Was it this one of the weekends where just people had enough hate? I, is three natures claims enough hate? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think the Tron matchup is actually a hundred percent great for Affinity. I, I think it's because O Stone can just yeah. Like, like if you don't not draw them, you're dead. Yeah, a Tron will kill you. Yeah, on, tur- on turn four you lose your board, and then the game's over. Yeah, so, like, so. it's, I mean, like, you can definitely just kill them on turn three, both games, but. Yeah, like, I mean, it's not on lose, like, I've lost to Affinity a whole bunch of times, and it usually is a result of them putting a lot of counters on an Ink Moth Nexus, so it doesn't matter if I o stone them, they can still kill me. Yeah. Um, But, like, there are draws that just, you can't beat as the Tron player, but it's not a, it's nowhere it's not close enough to, to it's like, not, yeah. a bad matchup. Right, you. exactly. So, I mean, like. Tron has good matchups in a lot of other places, and people just don't really play Burn. Yeah. You know, Efro did, but... He had a really good start, and then um, his day two didn't go too well. I So I actually f- said to somebody that, that I knew that would happen. I, I When I was watching for him playing for 9-0, he ended up 8-1, but I was like, eh, it doesn't really matter. He won't top eight. Because people in day two, like the players who I think... This is a conjecture, but players who are going to make day two also are the type of people who ain't losing to burn. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they're players who are like, uh-uh, I'm not getting cheesed out of this GP by losing to burn in the first four rounds. Mm-hmm. First six rounds. So their sideboard has cards for burn. Like People don't, because they're not taking that risk. Yeah, Because that's how you exit a modern GP very quickly, is you just don't have sideboard cards for burn, and you play it like twice in the first four rounds. First five, six rounds. Because yep. it's a huge stack. People love it. People play it all the time. It top aided the Invitational. One of the little kids was playing Burn and also Mono Red in Standard. That kid was running them down. That's yeah. the uh, the modern day story of being a kid. We've moved from Burn and Ants to Burn and Opponents. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Will I ever tell a story on here about when I was at Syracuse? Is the one of the only times I ever got a Deck Reg game loss. And I sat down and a judge comes over. And I was playing mono red at this tournament. It was in standard during outpost siege days. It was an SCG Syracuse. And I sat down and a little kid sat across from me. And I was like, oh, this kid's on mono red for sure. Like, it has to be, right? Like, there's just no yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> and before anything happens, a judge comes and is like telling this kid, like, oh, you have a deck list there. He's going to get like a game loss. But as that's happening, a judge comes over to me and he's like, come over here with me. I'm like, what the heck's going on? Right. And he's like, you have, do you see any problem with your deck list? I'm like, no, nah, it looks like all the cards are there. He's like, 
yeah, except the 20 mountains in your deck. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't register 20 mountains. <laughs> and I was like, Oops. oh, yeah, that is a bit of a pickle. And so we go back and sit down, and the judge is like, waiting for me? Like, where did he go with the little kid to tell me he has a game loss? Yeah. yeah. And then we go back, and this judge is like, well, he also has a game loss for the exact same thing. And I'm like, huh, right? <laughs> and then... uh they like call the head judge and he's like, uh, it just like wipes itself clean and you guys just play like a normal match. But I like, kept my hand, like this kid's gotta be on mono red, right? So I like yeah. mauled to a hand of six that was like nuts like, in the mirror and then like boarded for two, right? And like, of course, just like turn one mountain, like Foundry Street Dennis, and I was like, knew it. <laughs> he's like, little kids always play mono red, man. And if they're doing well, because I was six oh or seven oh at that point. Oh geez. And I was mono six-o red. <laughs> with no mountains in your deck. Yeah, dude. I was <laughs> mono redding people. <laughs> Just getting them with Mono Red. It was great. Jeez. Ron won that the Legacy Classic, actually. Did he? Yeah. With, that was that weekend? With Miracles, where he somehow beat... R.I.P. Yeah, where he somehow beat um, 12 Post. Oh. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> he beat a resolved Emerald Call at one point. <laughs> like... Man. Yeah. It was insane. Um, anyway, off topic. But, yeah, I, I feel like the people who show up to uh, play at a GP for modern, don't want to lose to Burn. Yeah. So I knew he wouldn't do great. And I just don't think, I just don't think Burn's good. It's just one of the many, like what would you consider Burn and modern is a tier? Tier two. Yeah, tier two. Maybe two or three. Because it's too easy to hate out and you just lose, when you lose the die roll a lot too. Like if you're on the draw game one, like you, you could just lose because of that. Yeah. Because yeah, like some, fair. you just lose on turn three to Storm. <laughs> like a lot of decks do. Right. But like yeah. you, you are so bad. Like you're so bad at dealing with it because mm-hmm. you need all your cards. And like you have awkward draws where like you sit down and you, you're on the draw and you're playing against the guy who's playing like blue, white, red control, like the counter burn deck. Yeah. You know, and you just like on the draw, he's like land go and you play goblin guide and he's like, oh, I'll just fetch a basic and bolt that, you know, and then like plays a second land and untaps lightning helix and passes the turn. So you're done. That's, yeah. That's the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Um. So, you know, kind of going into this weekend, is it safe to say that Storm was kind of everyone's public enemy number one? I mean, it won the Invitational. Everyone knows it's a great deck. It's just it's still putting up results. Like, do you think that had anything to do with the results we saw this weekend? I think maybe people played Tron because it was good against the decks that beat storm right that's had that had to be what happened like it's good against jund yeah and death shadow yep yeah just like adding some bolts to your tron deck to like answer storm doesn't seem like enough but it makes sense if you, that's like your concession in case storms up but you're aiming for like yeah, the storm killers yeah. well like well like the storm decks we saw do well we saw a mono green version and the black green version you mean tron decks right the tron decks yeah, yeah, yeah. is what i mean um so like collective <laughs> brutality decks Mono Green Storm, Manamorphose, baby. <laughs> um, so I mean, I'm I'm assuming Collective Brutality is good against Storm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that um, card's real good. I like that matchup's not good for Tron, but yeah, I think it. That also gives you a way up against Burn too. That mm-hmm. card's very good against Burn. Exactly. Um, but uh, a deck we did a lot of people were starting to pick up now more so than I think before is Lantern Control. There's been a lot of hype about that deck. It top eighty the Invitational. A lot of the pros have been talking about it, saying it's like very, very good. And yeah, I think it's it definitely is. very good. People just don't take the time to learn it. I mean, Zach Elsick, who won the G, the modern GP, GP OKC, OKC exactly last the exact year. same GP one year ago. Yeah, yeah. with with Lantern, he uh, he was undefeated day one. I'm pretty sure this year. Uh, X one, was he? There was at least two copies of Lantern in the top 32, maybe more. Yeah. But, I mean, Tron just kicks the teeth out of Lantern, so that's also possible. Right, like they... Depending how much Lantern was in the room. Well, I was going to say, you want to talk about why it beats Lantern so badly? Just so people... Because it might not be obvious to people. Well, so Lantern Control, it's main game... It's a control deck, right? It's a prison deck, essentially. It controls your draw steps by being able to see what's the top of each deck with uh, Lantern of Insight. And then it just mills things. Mills One card at a time, right? Yeah, it with knows. Codex Shredder, et cetera. But with Tron, like, the problem is... Uh, with Well, yeah, the biggest problem for Lantern coming out of Tron is Chromatic Sphere because um, 
it's draw. You can draw a card with chromatic sphere as as a mana ability when you sacrifice it, which you can't respond to. So if something's on top of your deck that you want to draw as Tron, you have a chromatic sphere in play. You can just draw it immediately, and Lantern can't mill it. Right, because it's part of the mana ability of that card of activating it, unlike. Yeah. Chromatic Star, which is a trigger that when it enters the graveyard, you draw a card. Exactly. So they're two separate, you know, they're it's, it's kind of an interesting difference in the cards. It makes a huge difference, yeah. So if you ever owe Stone Lantern, like Oblivion Stone, the, the game's over. Yeah, exactly. So you draw one O-Stone and they, I don't think they can just, they can beat a single O-Stone. And they don't have land hate, right? Well, they have Ghost Quarters, but Ghost Quarters are still easy to fight through. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And so, I mean, like, what are they? They're gonna have to surgical so many things that are a problem. Yeah. Like, like, for they, example, they just can't win fast enough to be able to beat all the fatties you're gonna draw. I mean, possible. and they also have to surgical world breakers or lose because milling yeah. them doesn't work. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, that's a problem for the deck. Don't yeah. they have one mill thing that exiles? Uh, Pixis, 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 Pixis pandemonium. pandemonium. Yeah, it's usually a one of though. I think right. I don't remember how many copies they played, but. Yeah, the, the real issue is that they can just draw when they want, mm -hmm. which is a crazy interaction that this matters in modern. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because their whole their whole game plan out of Lantern is to control your draw steps, so you don't draw anything relevant for the entire game. Yeah, and creatures don't matter because you're locked up with with ensnaring bridge. ensnaring bridge. But yeah, Tron just doesn't care about those things because they can easily get around them. Um, but yeah, aside, so aside from Tron, we did we saw Escape Shift take down the tournament. Uh, there was what else was in this top eight? Um, there was Dredge, Jeskai Breach. Uh, we haven't seen Jeskai Breach in a little while. It's been a minute. Yeah. Um, Playing Search for his Conta. So I'm still skeptical about that card. I see it in Modern. I still I don't know. Like Corey Burkhardt noted. Grix was control player. You know, he was playing copy too. He finished top six, definitely top 32. I want to say top six. Oh, did he? Yeah. I saw his deck list. Let me pull it up. Yeah, but he was playing a copy or two. This Jeskai Breach in the top eight was also, but I think this is like how... Yeah, 15th. Yeah, he was close. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think this is almost how you have to play control um, is with a combo finish almost in a lot of time. I don't know. I still don't know the verdicts out on whether you can even play control in modern. Clearly, like, Corey Burkhardt can, but that guy, like, has top-aided multiple GPs playing Grixis Control Modern. So. In general, though, it's been a while since you could play Control that can't either combo or turn the corner very quickly. Right. Like, well, there yeah, was like, another Control deck in the top 16, the blue-white one. There was a blue-white one, yeah. Yeah, but that one took, can turn the corner. It has Gideon. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the Control decks we've seen out of the, from the past in Modern, there was the Jeskai Nahiri deck, too, which, again, combo finish. Uh, we've seen Jeskai Breach before, but we haven't really seen it do well in a really long time. I think, though, this is the case of Modern, that any any deck, I guess, can win. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's a cool deck in the sense that it just needs to buy time to... Actually, so when I played Titan Shift, this the Jeskai, or the Blue-Red Breach deck was one of my only losses in the Swiss. Because they actually have a lot of answers to Valakit and stuff. Like, they Blood Moon, they bring in four Blood Moons if they want... Um, like they have a lot of ways to deal with your deck and they can then they can just kill you on turn five if they just like I lost to just remand, remand, combo kill you, you know? So they, oh, they yeah, that's their game plan, right? Yeah. So I mean if they draw a bunch of remands and you're just kinda like trying to cast two mana ramp spells that they're remanding, you're you're toast. So Yeah, we, we like there wasn't really any Death Shadow doing well at this tournament, eh? No, uh, everybody like knows what's happening. Yeah. Everybody knows how to play against it, what matters. You know what I mean? Everyone knows what's going on. Like, the jig is up. I think the deck is still good. Yeah, I, I mean, it's obviously still good. There's two copies of it in the top 32, but... It's just modern is good at balancing. Yeah. I'll give it that. It's a deck we haven't seen in a while. There's three copies of Jeskai Geist in the top 32 as well. I think that deck stinks. Yeah, well. Mostly because I think Geist of St. Traff stinks. But, but much better in a world where counters company isn't seeming to be popular at this GP. Right? Because yeah. you're not beating Kitchen Fink's deck decks no. with your Geist deck. No. You know, you attack your 2-2 two -two into their Kitchen Finks, you have fun. Like your angel doesn't even matter because they gained life. Like yeah. so yeah, if counters company doesn't see a lot of play, like it, it's good against Tron, I guess, that it races them, but it can be scary to tap out on turn three in modern. I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. It's like hard to know when to pull the trigger on Geist. Like I think that's a deck where if you want to play it, like you have had to play a lot of Geist and know when it's safe to play like your Geist. But yeah, less counters company is definitely a reason why you're seeing um Geist decks. Mm -hmm. Because you, you just can't beat Kitchen Finks. Yeah. I mean Yeah. I don't know. Like looking back on the weekend, modern it still seems like garbage to me. I still don't enjoy it. <laughs> I'm going to go play it and at the... Tron dominated this tournament, and I still think the format's garbage. That says something. But, you know, even if the format's garbage, um, I'm still going to go play it at the Wizards Tower this Saturday because that's a great store. And even yeah. if it's a garbage format, you got to go to that store and support their tournaments. Very true. Because they bring this podcast to you every week. <laughs> every week. And you can yep. check out their website, wizardtower.com, for all your single needs. Free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. I was going to try and do the plug, say something about, like, pick up your favorite lands today when we were talking about mm, them. but You should have. I should have, but, like, the conversation moved on. But, uh, no, I'm going to go actually play some Modern because um, I will say that their Modern tournaments are huge. Like, every time I've gone to, like, a Saturday Modern tournament, yeah. there's, like, 50 people. Like, there it's are, There is always yeah. a lot of people who come out to play yeah. Modern. So I'm I'm gonna go play the modern, even though I don't like the format. Like they host cool tournaments for it, so I'm going. You know, and yeah, I'm also going away for two weeks after that. So it's like the last time I'll play Magic for a couple weeks. So gotta get your fix. Yeah, fair enough. Even though I hadn't played in like a few weeks, when Cam and I went to go play on Un Unhinged or whatever, what what is it called? Unstable. Unstable. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, we staff and we walked in and the staff went, "Oh my god, you guys are alive!" Because <laughs> we hadn't played in so long. They were wondering yeah. where we'd been. Yeah, man. So, uh, modern's probably not that bad, man. You always say I'm that. Gonna, you oh, always say that. Both of you always say that. And then hours later, you're like, why'd we go play modern? <laughs> <laughs> it just and so then bad. you won't play for like three weeks to a month. Eh, it can't be that bad. <laughs> it's still been a while. It's been months for me. I'm not, I've learned my lesson, I think. Smart. Yeah. I'm going to play and I'm playing a control deck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing a deck with ancestral visions. Uh, Four of them. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's go slow. <laughs> I'm actually going to be so miserable. <laughs> I'm going to be like waiting to resolve an ancestral vision while Garn is just kicking my lands in. <laughs> it's actually fine, though, that you're playing a slower deck now since you like quit smoking, right? You don't have to go. You can play longer rounds. You don't yeah, need yeah, that yeah. time in between rounds anymore. Yeah, that's a huge thing. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Now I just have to go back to only playing control decks. Yeah. Well, that was the only reason I, I smoked at Magic Tournament so much, I feel like, because there's just so much downtime in between rounds. You know, I get bored. <laughs> now I just can play glacially slow control decks. Can't wait. I'm going to go 03 drop. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yeah. Going to play modern bingo? Oh, yeah. 100%. Good. Last Cam, are time. you going? No. <laughs> Cam knows no, better. come play. Cam knows better. I, wait, what deck? Don't you have Death Shadow together? No. Just get it back from Curtis. Uh, right. What if he's playing? He's going to play Lantern. I could lend you Tron. Yeah, he Ooh. does have Lantern. I don't want to play Tron. Uh, yeah, let me Tron. Let me Tron. <laughs> Actually, no. I'm going to play Control. But let me Tron so Cam can't play it so I don't have to play against Tron. <laughs> <laughs> I'd play Valakut if anyone has a Valakut deck. Uh, Phil Actually, does, but he's... Yeah, he's in... And he's MIA. Yeah. I just don't know where well, he okay, is. Okay, so the format, I don't know. I like... I want to like modern. Like, I want to be excited about its future, and I want to be excited about its metagame, and I want to be excited about the diversity in it. But I just don't think that the diversity is interesting or the decks are interesting and the matchups are interesting. It sucks. Like, I want to like modern. I really do. <laughs> I feel like now that you're done, you, you can't not me. Say stupid things like this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What? <laughs> Nothing. Modern. No, I, 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 I just, you did. You know, it's you, such a what? You, you did say that during your defense, one of your examiners, like it came up that you've played Magic. Yeah, yeah. It's a good thing you didn't ask for your opinion on the Modern. Oh yeah, <laughs> that'd have been rough. Because he was just like a gamer. We were talking about like in a break, like there was a break kind of thing that came up. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. um, no, like I also it's a, such a popular format, and now again a competitive format. So it's like there's GPs and a Pro Tour. So I feel like man, the Pro Tour is gonna ruin it. Like it always did. I right. Like I but I'm saying I want to be optimistic. Like, oh no, the modern pro tour will be like enjoyable and 
well, it'll be enjoyable for me watching something get broken and then <laughs> everyone get all pissed off. Miserable, like, yeah. I told you. Even idiots. this weekend, if you were following like Twitter from people playing in the GP, they were like, "Ugh, these games sucked." Like even people winning were like, "Ugh, modern sucks." Like people just hated their experience because you're playing against decks like Tron and Valakit and, and Storm. That, like, like these mat, these decks just aren't man, enjoyable. I play that deck and I can even admit that holy fuck, it's miserable. Yeah. It's probably not good for the format to have a deck like that in it, but whatever. As long as it exists, I'll just keep not playing modern, but <laughs> you know. Yeah, it just it's just it's just an unbelievably miserable non interactive like it just gets it just shuts off so many possible things you can be doing. You know, it's so wild to me that Bloodbraid Elf is still banned. Like that's nuts. Man, that card's not good enough. Right. Like I I, I said something the other day to somebody like I can't believe it's banned. They're like, oh, that card's crazy. I'm like, what deck would even play it? I don't even know if Jund would play it. Uh, they probably would. But like, yeah, maybe. I bet they only play like two or three copies. Like they used to only play two or three copies. They yeah. didn't even play the full four for a long time. The other thing is like, I was, I, oh yeah, that's how it came up because I was talking about GTA when they were talking about banned cards. I was like, you could probably unban that card in modern right now. And someone was like, no, that's crazy. This, this is an insane card. I'm like, what deck would play it? What deck is it even good against? Mm. Well, look at this modern tournament. What deck in the top eight do you care? What, what deck would you want four copies of GTA in your deck? I don't know, man. Against any deck in the top eight. None! If you gain some life, they might not be able to grape shot you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, it's too slow. What, are you going to yeah. tap out and put something on your creature? You playing creatures that attack in modern? Yeah, enjoy your tournament. Like, put it on your guys. <laughs> enjoy your O2 <laughs> drop. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just, like, I did, that's what I was, I was talking about. It's like, it, GTA is not even good enough for modern, probably. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm just missing something. But, like, in the state of the metagame from, like, the snapshot of this weekend and what people are doing, like, what it would kick burn out of the meta. So, like, what it even, like, what what decks were born into it? The best decks just, like, wouldn't even play GTA. Yeah. They don't have room and they don't need to because they're all, like, linear strategies that need every piece of their deck to be what they're doing. Like, I just don't even think GTA matters. That's how insane of a world we live in. Like, you could probably unban Deathrite Shaman. Uh, <laughs> that's probably a step too far. Is it? Who would play it? John. Right. Abzan. The fair decks <laughs> that can never beat Tron in a billion years? Like, uh, turn to Liliana's pretty good at beating Tron. Yeah, that is real good. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's too good. Uh, so turn what two, you're saying is they should, two, just two play, John and... should just play Birds of Paradise and turn, they would never no, lose. Turn two, two Planeswalkers and play? That seems sweet. That is sweet. God. But I'm just saying, yeah, just play Birds of Paradise. Apparently, <laughs> never beat that card. <laughs> like, I just, yeah, I just the more I think about the modern ban list, like, the more it just is, like, so ludicrous to me because the format is maybe in a wildly unhealthy place right now, the more I think about it. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm curious what listeners think. They probably think I'm crazy, but I don't even think GTA matters. I don't think Bloodbraid. Well, Bloodbraid definitely doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what, we, could, hey, we could just like talk about what like how how's stupid this for an certain idea? cards are banned in the format forever. But like the fact of the matter is, format still sucks. <laughs> okay, so. I just I'm just saying, what would it take? I know what it would take, but I want to get into it on what it would take to make the format healthy. Are we talking about ban fetch lands? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> How about we go the other way? How about we just completely rebuild modern? We host two modern GPs like a couple months from now. And we personally host them. Uh, the DWC GP. WotC hosts two GPs a couple months from now, and they unban everything in modern. And then based on the results of that of those GPs, they reevaluate the ban list. Yeah, they've done tournaments like that. It's not a good look. But yeah, but then they know what needs to be banned and what doesn't. I mean, they've, it's just like hypergenesis decks. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like it's, oh, yeah. They know what it is. They Sign know, me up. Yeah, people know what the problem cards are. Like, we know what the abusable... Like, even uh, Caleb Durward did a YouTube series like a year and a half, two years ago on, like, we're going to play Modern versus, like, Splinter Twin and other decks that were, like, back then legal or whatever decks with, like, the banned cards and see which ones would actually matter or safe mm. to come off the ban list. And like that was one that was just like now under no circumstances like this this deck like this card cannot come off the ban list and there's a few of them like that like but I you know like whatever I the format you just got to ban fetches but <laughs> and ban fetches in eighth edition in Yuguchi right because then it bans Blood Moon and Tron and then you got to ban something from Affinity that's it easiest solution 
I don't, yeah. Can't wait to play Control Modern this Saturday <laughs> and report back when I return <laughs> to the eastern side of this country in a, three weeks or whatever. <laughs> oh, man. I'm stranded in the prairies for a long time. Ugh. Hey, come on. <laughs> it's going to be hype. The prairies? Ugh. <laughs> It's been really warm there recently. It's been like plus 15 10. 15 degrees. Yeah, they got like puddles in the middle of December. Man, it was freezing today. Yeah, minus 22. God. Minus 22 for our American listeners. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's cold. It's really I think it's like minus, I don't know, probably like 15. I, uh, no. Dude, I have literally no idea. Okay, well, minus, I don't, minus 40 is the I same. I can't convert freedom units. Like I just, Minus 40 is the same, and their degrees are more than ours. So up 20 is like up, I don't know. Thank God we have a computer in front of us. Let me uh, stay tuned. Uh, minus seven. Seven point six Fahrenheit. Okay, how much is minus fifteen? How 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 much was I off? Minus fifteen. Minus fifteen Fahrenheit. Uh, twenty six. I wasn't even off by that much. Yeah, right. You said yeah. it was minus twenty two. I was off by four degrees. Come on, that, that's enough. Four degrees is a lot. Yeah, minus twenty two, minus twenty six. That's not a good look either way. I'm not. I'm not pleased. <laughs> Both suck. Both. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but um, <laughs> but uh, it's being cold and slow. Yep. Topic number sloth. <laughs> <laughs> number sixty-five. Wait, no, that's episode sixty-five. Four. No, we've done more than Man, four. We are really looking no, up to our disorganized <laughs> wizards club name right now. We Holy have done Molly, greed, pride, uh, envy, envy, and oh, maybe this is the fourth. Yeah, I'm pretty. I think it's the fourth. Okay, sure. Yep. But we're going to talk about control Adam's mirrors. dumb decision to play a control deck in modern. Yeah, and control, control decks mirrors thing. and control decks in general. Yeah, we've done three so far. So three. Okay, fourth. so this is the fourth. Anyway, this was kind of, uh, well, technically last week, but we had to take a break. But this was kind of our one window in the current standard climate to even talk about control decks, that we even have any decks to talk about because World Magic Cup was team unified standard. So people couldn't all just play energy. Right. They, you, yeah, you only get four copies of each Rats. card among your team. Every team played energy, though, I bet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But some of the people had to play control decks. So, like, if you look at um, the World Magic Cup, there was control, there was white-blue cycling, there was, you know, a bit of innovation. If you compare that to the Invitational standard results, all energy and all red. So, you know what? Is the, do you think there was a single team at the World Magic Cup that didn't play Energy Mono Red? I don't think so. Like a single one that didn't play those two decks. I didn't check, the... but I doubt it. Yeah, there was some energy variant. Sometimes they mixed together like Saltai and Teamer Energy. Well, yeah, no, like but, what uh, I'm saying, Energy yeah, yeah, as, and, a, as a and whole a red. or and Mono Red. Like a, an Attune with Aether deck and Mono Red. Yeah. Right? Oh. Like let's just say Attune with Aether yeah. is, the, is the card. Some of them played Mardu. But I bet they as also... Their, uh, yeah. Is Instead of mono red, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right. Yeah, there are definitely people who played Mardu over mono red, but I bet every team guaranteed played a Natoon with Aether. Yes. There's no way. Oh yeah, you'd be, you'd be shooting yourself in the head not to. Yeah. There were some four color control decks playing the Atune with Aether. <laughs> oh. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, we have control decks we can talk about, and perhaps ones that are playable in standard. I mean, the blue white cycling one has some legs, right? Like it has some. Like it, it went eight and two with the Pro Tour. Uh, it it's has got, done, it's, got done, leg, it's got legs and sets of four when it makes drakes. <laughs> <laughs> it you know it top thirty two to GP like that deck came close to top you know like and surprisingly even though there weren't actually that many control decks because there was like you know there was some blue black mid range there was some other a lot of blue white god pharaoh's gift which isn't really a control deck was at worlds but there was one control mirror on coverage surprisingly so you would we actually have something that you could go watch I think it was the <laughs> semifinals quarterfinals. Yeah. Poland versus uh, the Dragons. Wales? Yeah. Poland versus, <laughs> the, Poland dragon. versus the Dragons. Uh, yeah, so there was, it was blue-black control versus the blue-white cycling deck, which is a control deck. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so we'll probably talk a bit more about that match later. But yeah, we're talking about control mirrors. Okay. And I think control mirrors are one of the least understood matchups in Magic. It's one where, like, Everybody complains when they see it happening. Because every other match finishes. They're so slow. Right. Every other match finishes. And then they all come and they stand around the table where this match is going on. And they see people drawing, playing a land, and passing. Drawing, playing a land, and passing. How Magic was meant to be played, by the way. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, no rush 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, 
and yeah, a lot of people always complain like, oh, isn't this exciting? They're just playing lands and passings. Nobody's doing anything. And I think they miss a lot of the like subtleties or maybe they just miss the reasoning behind why no one's doing anything. Yeah, I, probably the most likely answer is just no one really understands what's going on in the matchup at all. And it just it just looks like boring magic. All right. But it's a lot of actually like very like it's very sensitive to timing. Control mirrors. Yeah, they're all about who pulls the trigger first for win conditions, about knowing, like, knowing decklist is huge, but in the cases you don't, knowing what you have to play around, what you can and can't be, what you can let resolve for, like, a set amount of time. Like, there's so many issues that have to go through your head to successfully navigate a control mirror. I really enjoy control mirrors because they feel a little less RNG. Because they take so long, because you draw so much of your deck, you can actually play your entire deck against your opponent's entire deck. You don't have to, like, hope to fade a couple draw steps because that's not enough. You have to beat their entire deck, which is fun, in, in, in my opinion. I agree. I think it's I think it's very enjoyable. And a lot, a lot of navigating a control mirror is about knowing which cards are dead and which you can afford to discard the hand size, mm -hmm. right? And when you can afford to fire something off. Uh, when to use your draw spells, uh, when to counter draw spells. Like, these are all issues that can come up in control mirrors. And most of those are kind of answered by, like, understanding the type of control deck you're playing versus your opponent, which is, like, if you have deck lists or if you know kind of the 75 of your opponent, that can sort of answer most questions. Um, a good example being, like, say your opponent is playing a deck relying on two Scarab Gods and a Gear Hulk, and you're playing, like, a four Gear Hulk deck with some creature lands, like... Those are going to play very differently because one has, you know, maybe five threats versus three, but the deck with more threats has to kind of be the aggressive version. Right. So they might counter draw spells, right? Whereas you don't care or you let draw spells resolve or like, obviously this is also game dependent too, because like times that they mulligan or miss land drops, which is the like famous cardinal sin in control mirrors. Like if they're stuck on three lands and trying to resolve or four lands and try to resolve a draw spell, like you can counter it because keeping them from their land drops so you can cast multiple counter spells a turn when they can't is a huge part of it, right? Like, mm -hmm. that's no, like in control mirrors, when you know you're playing against control, like, one of the first things you should do is, like, am I going to be able to hit my land drops? Like, yeah. I don't need answers, right? Like, I don't need answers right now. I need draw spells, counter, like, counter spells I can get later about mind keeping some now, but, it, like, can I hit my land drops and draw cards? It's the only thing that matters. <laughs> I guess, so, yeah, that that matters because, um, like, the... The, the main combat, the biggest thing that you're going to fight over, like the where the battle is won in Control Mirrors, I think, is the the counterspell war or the potential counterspell war. So, like, if both players have a lot of lands, and you'll see this sometimes when, like, everyone's hit their land drops in, like, high-level games. There's a lot, I've, There's been a lot of coverage where, like, Shota does this very well. I remember back when Spell Queller was in Standard. This actually made some interesting interactions, but someone would try and resolve a threat. And then there would be a massive counter war where everyone spends all of their mana, and they both have seven cards in hand, and you're just trying to, like, more efficiently counter all your opponent's spells. Like, do I dispel this or do I dissolve this, etc. But, like, the counter war is where those games matter. And a lot of the pre-game in Control Mirrors is setting up for that counter war, which is why land drops are important. Right. If you miss a land drop, you're not going to have the resources to cast as many counters as your opponent in one turn. So you're going to lose the counter war. I think this is also why um, you don't see players try and cast threats early. Like, say they have six or seven lands and a Gear Hulk they won't cast it because that leaves them with one mana. And then if their opponent counters it, they can't counter back and they've lost the counter war. Right. Yeah. That's the basics. Yeah. Yeah. And so then you need to decide to like, you know, can I let the gear Hulk resolve? Cause now this turns on my removal, which was previously dead. Like there's yeah, that a lot of decisions you have to make about your hand size and like how you maneuver your hands. So it's about like positioning your resources so that you can leverage them later all at once. Like, that's why land drops are so important is that you're trying to make it so that you can leverage a huge amount of cards in your hand at once in burst. Yeah. Like con control mirrors tend to end in a, like they can end in a burst like that or they can get ground out. Like there are ways to grind them out, but that's less common these days. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't live in the day of a card like Nefalia drown yard anymore. Right. Or uh, rev. Yeah. Because, like, in the Rev, I, th I think I've told this story before. In the Sphinx's Revelation days, people started playing Elixir of Immortality so that they could shuffle their yep. graveyard back into their library and just keep drawing more Sphinx's Revelations and win the game by just 
doing that over and over until they ultimate adjacent stole a win condition from their opponent's deck. But in the mirror, when no one had a win condition, what ultimately became the win condition, and I used to beat a lot of people because they wouldn't know what to do, is I would save syncopates, which if they if it did successfully counter a spell, it's a blue X counter spell unless they pay X. Mm. I would save that for the very end of the fight over a revelation, and I would aggressively fight against revelations to try and resolve the syncopate to exile their revelation. So that over the course of shuffling our graveyards into our libraries over and over again, they weren't shuffling back revelations. They could get back all the counter spells and stuff. doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? They counter my rev. Yeah, sure. It's in the graveyard. As long as it doesn't get syncopated, I'm fine. So, like, I would leave up two or three mana just to, like, pay for a syncopate. And if they did, I just wouldn't pay. I just let it get countered sometimes. Because if I didn't want to fight over the revelation... They'd be like, oh, counter it unless you pay three. Okay, resolves. Like, or sorry, like, uh, counter like my own rev or, or counter the syncopate and like let them counter the wrong thing. Like, there's lots of ways to protect your rev, right? But a lot of people would waste dissolves instead of syncopates on revs. So you always syncopate the revelation, right? Nothing else because you need to exile. So you need to know like which counters matter and where. Like, you should probably like your Hulk's resolve in current standard, for example, in a control mirror because like, you probably have harness lightnings in your deck game one. We'll talk about post like boarding in a second. Yeah. But like So what yeah, what you were saying there was syncopates and kind of with the gear hulk, it's more so not just save your counters for what matters, but it's very much like both players have so many more answers than they have cards that are threatening. And threats can include, you know, things that will kill you. They can include draw spells. They can include they include like syncopates. Your opponent's syncopates are a threat kinda to your like um, revelations. To your revelations. And you have an array of answers. Some can answer all of these threats. Some can only answer, like, minor. Some have that you... What am I trying to say? Some of like your hard answers... Like, counter spells versus essence scatter. Right. But you'd prefer some of yours to answer, like... So, like, a dissolve can answer any of my opponent's cards. But this harness lightning can only answer their gear hulk, so I'd prefer to use... Like, to not dissolve the gear hulk so okay. that I can efficiently distribute my cards. Right, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah. like, you never want to waste your like what's the hard counter spawn standard right now uh disallow yeah disallow like you never want to waste your disallow on a gear hulk in game one like that's such a bad feeling even in game two right like you well you, yeah you Sometimes, just, but... it's so miserable right like so it's you have to be very careful in those mirrors not to waste those things that can answer their other problems right later so one of the tricks in control mirrors is quickly identifying like which resources you can spend on answering other resources of theirs mm-hmm Right. Because, and, like, you might not have a Harness Lightning in your hand currently in game one. Let's say you're playing Grix's Control. Mm -hmm. But you will probably draw one. And that will answer the Gear Hulk, you know? So, like, you need to make sure you don't waste Dislows on a Gear Hulk. You can take 15 from a Gear Hulk. <laughs> yeah. You can take 10. Like, in a Control Mirror. It's not like he's just going to top deck like a Thundermaw and kill you. Like, that's... Right? So, it's important to kind of know that, like, your life total isn't really under duress until it's too late. Mm-hmm. And even then, like, if your life, like, if you're at five and your opponent has a Gear Hulk, that could be the turn where because you haven't been doing anything, you win the big flurry of spells, you win that stack, and you kill their Gear Hulk and you counter their draw spell, and now suddenly you're ahead. It doesn't matter that you were at five, yeah, because your opponent spent some of their resources, and now they're out of Hulk ways to interact, protecting it, yeah. But it's important in what as well in Control Mirrors to have a game plan of okay, yeah, like they only have let's say one Gear Hulk and two Scarab Gods, and I have four Gear Hulks and two Scarab Gods. Okay, so now. What is my game plan? Do I have to press this advantage? Do I have to try and sneak a gear hulk in and then protect it like a tempo game plan? Like it's really important to identify in what's happening in the game of or at least in your hand to craft a game plan and control mirrors around your hand because there are control mirrors where you don't have the liberty to just sit back and counter everything because that's not how your deck's constructed. You only have like six hard counter spells and they have 12. Mm -hmm. So you need to really think about how you're going to leverage your resources in your deck and your draw steps because like you said, you will draw most of your deck. Um, so that's like a game one at least game two becomes like a completely different monster because like how you sideboard changes everything and how you think your opponent will sideboard like are they boarding in creatures are they boarding out all their creatures yeah are they boarding in some obnoxious like secondary win condition you know like well, yeah, like sideboarding is when the control players get to be a little more creative when approaching the mirror right like I, I think the there's not really a set in stone way to approach them you can do does. so many things like yeah. i think one of the best things in standard right now currently if you were playing a hard control deck 
in the mirror would be to board in glint sleeve siphoners. If okay. you were playing a black control deck, I would 100% advocate for boarding four of them in versus control mirror, and I'm not sure you'd need much more. Because, like, that card's going to be a slaughter against so many control decks. The uh, Team Wales, their blue-black control player, was playing Deadeye Navigators in the sideboard, which is kind of similar. Wait. Deadeye that, that can't be the right card. Deadeye Tracker. The one, the black Deadeye one Navigator's drop. like an EDH 5, five okay. soul yeah, it's Deadeye card. Tracker. Deadeye Tracker, the black one drop, exile two cards from your opponent's oh, graveyard, explore. explore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is similar, right? It can yeah, be yeah. card advantage, and like it draws you lands, which that deck wants. It, it hates out some of the graveyard strategies in standard. But yeah, it's the same idea. A small, cheap creature that can... Sneak gener- under like even an essence scatter. Yep. They're not going to leave in their fatal pushes. If they do have Raska's Contempts for Planeswalkers that they're worried about or, or Scarab God, now they're stuck in a... And it's super inefficient, yeah. Horrible decision of like, oh God, like if I ta- if I have Raska's Contempt this thing now, like they're Scarab God living. So, you know, and then that puts the strain on the rest of their resources. So when you sideboard in control mirrors, it's a lot about like positioning yourself to limit their resource capability, right? By boarding in some one drop that becomes a threat, be- does all these various things like dead eye tracker, it makes it so that now their resources are stretched even thinner, right? Because if they're only going to have post board certain answers, so let's say it's a blue black control mirror is mm-hmm. what I'm kind of referring to, I guess. They're only going to really have Raska's contempts. They're going to have boarded out their pushes unless they know, right? Yeah, so you're son- you're getting your opponent by setting up your deck to have an er- to gain an early game advantage when your opponent is setting up their deck to win the late game. Right, and then you still have a late game because of yeah. this this setup, right? Because it 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 basically denies them resources or yeah, and like you you are sacrificing a bit of your late game to get that early game advantage. Right, because if you draw that card late, it's miserable. Yeah, but most of the time you're you're because you've gained that get advantage in the early game it's it amounts to too much for your opponent to be able to extend the game right to the point where they would take control right? yeah like even just a glint sleeve right think about it chipping in for two drawing a card every other turn it's yeah these like small early threats they're attacking your opponent's ability to line up their deck against yours it's like the when i remember when i was playing a lot of team or tower right and i would board in 12 cards and mm-hmm. people were playing a lot of control during that time. That was when the um, blue-red control deck was really popular, mm-hmm. right, with Torrential and all the other stuff. And people were playing a lot of that deck, and I was playing a lot of Team or Tower because they couldn't beat Tower first off. But they board in all these answers and counter spells for Tower, and I just board in Long Tusk Cubs and Tireless Trackers and, like, Bristling Hydras. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were just dead. Well, because Control can't beat a Bristling Hydra, but they wouldn't have an answer for Cub. Just turn two Cub, and they're sitting on a hand of Disallows. You know, yeah, just, uh, just stone dead to cop at a counter, uh, counter that, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> counter the energy trigger, I guess, <laughs> right? So, yeah, it's the same kind of concept like, okay, well, I'll just win the early game then because you just won't be prepared, you know, you just catch them with your pants down, right? Like, and we've seen this, it's a time honored, it's time honored, it's a time honored it tradition um, in control mirrors to just stomp someone into the dirt with creatures. It was Dragon Master Outcast for a while. Oh, yeah, that's a classic. It one. was Fevered Visions for a while. Yeah. Um, boarding into Planeswalkers, like three mana Planeswalkers. This even kind of came up um, in that match at the Worlds that was streamed, where Drakehaven is this sort of efficient three mana threat that you can just run out early, which will can entirely warp how your opponent has to look oh, at yeah. it. Oh, yeah, that's got to be miserable for the control player. I don't think they could beat, like, a blue-black control deck is not beating Drake. Like, Drake Haven's not as bad as Fevered Visions, but it's... It's pretty it's, close. It's, it's, it's really close, yes. Yeah, because they can just cycle all their dead cards, which make a 2-2 now, which is yeah. infinite card advantage, basically. And, like, them. I think the blue-black player played it well. Like, they understood, especially game one, they had a lot of fatal pushes in hand, they had Vraska's Contempt. He was just not hesitating to cast Vraska's Contempt on Drake's, because... There won't be a better target. He understood how he had to try and win, but he just, just cut too, in. There was yeah. too many drakes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. See, like that guy understood though, right? Right yeah. away. Like, oh, I, I'm never having another target, so. right? Like, and I think a lot of people in that scenario, especially maybe if they're not as familiar with control decks, would hesitate. Like, oh, I don't want to use my fatal push on a token. I don't really want to Vraska's Contemptus. Like, just a two-two, which is correct in any other. If you're playing anything else, if you're playing Saltai, you don't want to push a Drake. But if you're playing control, snap push it. Like, use your mana efficiently. You have to. You're not going to push anything else. Right. Yeah, that's a huge part of it. So, yeah, well, one of the things you can work on in control mirrors is sort of just assessing the threats your opponents can't beat if they resolve. Um, having a cyborg plan for doing 
kind of similar thing of trying to sneak a threat that they can't resolve, right? That's just yeah. the the top end of this was um, when it was legal and standard was uh, Sphinx of the Final Word, right? Yeah. That was just the complete busted mirror breaker for control. That card was unbeatable and, you know, if one person had it and the other didn't, that was game. Mm-hmm. And it was just lights out. Like, just nothing you can do. So mm-hmm. you want to look and pay attention for cards like that. But in game one, yeah, it's definitely about trying to find holes for your spells to do something that are dead, making your land drops. Um, yeah, I think, like, finding... So this was kind of something I wanted to bring up. But finding a hole for your spells to do something is... As I mentioned earlier, these matchups are very timing dependent. And it's kind of finding a time or forcing your opponent into a time when they can't do anything because they're a control deck. They have answers for basically everything. And so like casting a glint sleeve earlier or casting a fever visions early, sometimes like if you're on the play, they can't do anything because they don't have enough mana yet. But yeah, you construct a situation where they can't respond. And this happens a lot, even in game ones or when you don't have your busted sideboard card. But a lot of times, and I've done this in the past, like I'll have a gear Hulk and a pull for tomorrow. And I want, say, the Gear Hulk to resolve because I have a counterspell to protect it and I can kill my opponent pretty quickly. And so I will pull for too much on my end step. Right, to bait the counter. Right, to make them counter it. And then they'll be, okay, now you're tapped too low. On my main phase, like, Gear Hulk, cast a Glimmer, like, and now I have counter magic up, right? So it's this kind of, you can find scenarios in these control mirrors where I have two threats. Either of them are fine. And so I will make my opponent counter one. Right, and then untap with the ability to make sure I resolve the other yes. and still leave up all counterspell, maybe, and hope that I can. Yeah, it's good enough. And that's why, actually, this is sort of an interesting pattern. So, like, the beginning of Control Mirrors will be a lot of draw go just playing lands. And then sometimes they'll reach a point where all of a sudden everybody's just playing on their main phase. Right? Like, you've seen this happen. Yeah, it's rare, but it happens. Right. But it's like sometimes someone will try and do something on their end step to force a counterspell. And then on their main phase, because they've made their opponent tap mana and they've just untapped, they can now win the counter war. So they'll cast a threat, win the counter war over it. But now they're tapped out, so their opponent casts the threat. And now yeah. all of a sudden you're just playing like this mid-range main phase game. Yeah. Because suddenly you've made time for each other to play the game. Right, yeah. That's another thing to be aware of, though, is like, okay, if I'm going to let this mid-range game resolve, like, what are they going to resolve and can I deal with it in a few yeah. turns? Like, that's a very important thing you have to be aware of in the control mirror as well. Um, apart from that, like general sideboarding is just all counter spells in. Yeah, all counter spells in. <laughs> only leave in your most general and powerful removal. Right. Some of like it. if you're gonna get got by glint sleeve, like I guess, like we're like we're like advocating the sideboard strategy that loses to the sideboard strategy we're advocating. For. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, this is like a thing though that you have to be aware of, and like um, in the control mirrors. Also, this is why like I really I always do this when I'm playing control mirrors is I shuffle all 15 sideboard cards in and then take 15 out. And then I do it again for game three, even if I'm leaving in the exact same configuration. Because if, let's say, I board it in I'm Glint Sleeve Siphoners, right? I I might take them out in game three. Mm-hmm. I used to do this with Teamer Tower all the time. I'd like board in Cubs and then board them out. Right? And then now they have Fatal Pushes back in their deck for game three. Yeah. And I don't have a target. And now yeah, I have virtual card advantage because of that. So, yeah, that's like an important thing to think about. Or like if they know it. So like... You got to have the read. You got to get the soul read on people where you can see like what they're doing. And like, it's just uh, to be aware of how people might sideboard and then to assess like, can I leave this card in? Or like, if if they bring in a bunch of cubs, can I can I possibly win? So then maybe I do need to leave in a fatal push or two. Mm-hmm. Like, you need to make these kind of decisions. Like, can I win through that? Like, oh, hopefully they just don't have it on turn two and they draw it late. Like, and I can win, you know? So you need to think about this in mirror in control mirrors to be successful in them because they're very difficult against good players. They are very difficult. I think if you're worried about, like, a Cub-like strategy or a Glen sleeve like strategy, I think if you're unsure, it's generally slightly better to leave in, like, one or two Fatal Push because then you kind of have a backup plan. And worst case scenario, it's like a quote-unquote free discard to hand size later. You, if they don't have Cubs, the game will go along and you won't need this card and you can pitch it. And sculpt your hand into something that can win the flurry of counter spells that's going to come up. Right. Yeah. So yeah, which it, is you know, if you're confident, obviously it's better to not have had to do that. But if you're unsure, like, yeah, it's better to not just snap die because you gambled and didn't leave them in. <laughs> right. So yeah, you have to make that decision of well, yeah. can, will I just automatically lose to this or can I beat it? Right. So yeah, that's definitely something you need to be aware of in the control mirrors. Um, another thing is like. 
cards like Search for Esconto, like you probably need to feel to ruin them immediately or you know kill them immediately because they will crumble you. Like these kind of anything you see that has like a long engine, right? Like mm-hmm. that can grind out card advantage over time needs to be addressed. Because those are how you lose control mirrors, because then yeah. they just have a never ending flow of answers and counter spells and you don't. So kind yeah, of it, trying to get your Ascanto online and protect it, that's a huge part. Anything like that, just protecting your card advantage engines is a huge part of winning control mirrors. Yeah, again, because it sets you up. Like those card advantage spells set you up for the coming fight. Um, but on the flip side, like if your opponent is resolving some big like card advantage thing, like say they're glimmering or they're casting like a draw or whatever, but they have six cards in hand, yeah, let them save your counter spell. Like it's not actually getting them any card advantage. They're going well, to have especially game one where yeah. like there could be so many dead cards in their hand. Yeah, game one they're probably drawing dead. Like yeah. If they've made a land drop and they're glimmering with a bunch of cards in hand, even game two sometimes, it's like, yeah, yeah, I mean, okay. I wish Miracles was still around for the control mirror so I could just be like, just mull to counterbalance and win. (laughs) (laughs) This is the only card in the mirror that matters. It's like top counterbalance. Somebody goes like top counterbalance and like you force their counterbalance and like they force back. You're like, oh, scoop them up, I guess. (laughs) Like that's it because we're literally playing the mirror. Counterbalance looking pretty good right now. (laughs) Card's just unbeatable. (laughs) Unbeatable in the mirror, I'm telling you. Trying cast that was like such a so miserable. Yeah, I can imagine. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. Oh yeah, Is try it? and cast a card. Well, I'll show you a cop- that copy of my card. Yeah, not a good luck. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. <laughs> yeah, one time I beat Ron though in the Miracles Mirror when he had counterbalance and play, and I didn't. How? Uh, I just remember because I sh- went to shuffle my deck to c- oh uh, to cut and or I. Or sorry, he offered me to shuffle after a fetch when he was shuffling for a top, and I cut, and he blind revealed on a counterbalance, and he revealed like a four, and he just kept missing, and I was like, right on. I kept getting like really lucky, and then yeah. I ultimated a Jace, I think. Oh. <laughs> like he just didn't have an answer to Jace, and I just ulted it. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only reason I won. It was great. Uh, he was pretty ticked because he like top counterbalanced me, and I just like did nothing, and then turn four like played a Jace, and he just like couldn't find an entreat. Couldn't find an answer. <laughs> like, Died. It was great. <laughs> so in uh, current standard format, I think it's kind of very known that um, Search Res Kanta has become kind of the pinnacle of the control decks that do exist. It's yeah. probably the most important card. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it makes sure you hit your land drops. <laughs> yeah. It does everything. It makes sure it, you hit it your land drops, and then it becomes a land yeah. and finds you the cards that matter. Yeah. So uh, if you plan on playing control in current standard, which you shouldn't, um, <laughs> yeah, but don't. if you do... Like, um, the invitational results, like despite there being control at Worlds, the invitational results shows that like they were forced into doing that. They didn't want to. I don't know. I mean, like... Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say like I'll play some control and go that. stomp some people, but then I was like, I mean, that no. doesn't prove anything. I, like the only deck you should be playing until the next set comes out is energy or mono red. Those are the only ones. Okay, I'm gonna play some control this week and stomp you. I'm gonna go five bullet league, BRB. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Um, but yeah, uh, like I was saying, what was I saying? Um, if you and somehow end up in a control mirror, identifying the cards that matter very early in the game is important, and Sutra's Kanta is that card. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, aside from that, do you want to just briefly go over the points you've mentioned? Uh, yeah, like, so control mirrors are very much about sort of one, like, flurry of a fight. Um, where... In standard. In standard, yeah. Where all of the beginning of the game is a setup for that fight. So like making, like trying not to miss land drops early and also not casting anything early, make sure that you have the resources to um, cast enough spells to like win this counter or when it occurs. Um, That big fight, like it doesn't have to always be late game with like 12 mana on on either side. It could be over like an efficient threat, like a fever divisions or a Drake Haven early where like you have a counter spell for their counter spell. And like, that's kind of where you pick your fight, but it's, Making sure, like, both players are just waiting until they feel they have enough resources to actually so, compete over a threat. Yeah. I feel like, though, this is, like, the, it's important, though, to really add the caveat that 
you are going to get crushed if you just blindly play like that. You need to set up that fight. Like you need to yeah. use resources along the way to that fight to bait them into using things they shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, that's to what I was gonna. Getting them to use counter spells on the wrong card draw to getting them to wasting stuff on you know on threats they shouldn't. Like you need to kind of use various tactics like bluffing, like anything to try and get people to use the wrong resources leading up to this fight. Like, yeah, sure, they end in a flurry and like yeah, they yeah. counter war, but there are a bunch of things you need to do along the way to set up for winning that counter. Yeah, right. Like each player is trying to set up their hand to win this counter war while also you, still navigating yeah, while the game. using the parts of their hand that maybe they don't want to save for this to try and uh, mess with their opponent. Right. Right. So like, say you've drawn two threats early and not very many answers, you'll try and do that, like, one, two, like, one of these is going to resolve because I'm going to starve you out of mana, so, like, I'll try and do that because yeah. I don't have only answers in my hand. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, things like, uh, yeah, like, trying to make glimmers. Like, if you're going to miss your land drop, glimmering to, like, hit lands, trying to understand when your opponent's glimmering to hit lands, or if, like, there's a yeah, lot there's going a on. Yeah, there's a ton of, there's a ton yeah, of you'll have to deep. assess, like, as you're playing. Like, like, there's these a are reason, all things... Yeah. There's a reason why, like, Shota just, like, plays circles around people in control mirrors, and it's because he has so much experience, and obviously we can't convey that in half an hour. Right, yeah, but, like, yeah, you will know when it's coming, like, a fight is coming, but, or you should, and you should be prepared to fight over the kind of flurry that Cam's referring to, but you shouldn't be just, oh, sh oh shit, there's a fight. Like, you, that, yeah, yeah. you should have been prepared. You should have been, like, hitting the gym and going to a trainer, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> baiting the glimmers and, like, torrentials. Yeah. Like, you should be setting up for this, right? Like, and it's, playing the lantern mirror is probably, like, the same way. Like, you're trying to deny specific things and setting up for specific yeah. cards that matter. And, yeah, you modern. need to be able to recognize, like, say your opponent goes Metal to... cards. <laughs> say your opponent goes to cast a threat. Or is this the fight? Or are they trying to trick me? Are they willing to fight over this? Or are they trying to make me waste a counter spell? Like, you need to know when to go in. Right. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, like, probably, I think, like, the overall points that are the most important. Yeah. Make sure you have the resources and make sure you don't squander your resources while trying to make your opponent squander. It's just all of magic, but, like... Yeah, it just it just all plays out so much more clearly in a control mirror. In some yeah. Ways. Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's a bit slower. There's more turns. You kind of get to see players set up for these things. Um and if you're ever watching a control mirror, like if the last match is going to time because it's a control mirror and they all have a billion lands, like don't complain that it's going. I mean, you can complain a little bit, but don't like when you're, what to do. when you're watching the players, like if they don't do something and you're like, God, I'm control players wasting my time instead, like try and figure out why did they not do that? What are they saving it for? What are they waiting to have in hand before they cast their gear hulk? Yeah, like, why are they willy nilly throwing counters around? I think the average like control players like not great they just sort of like slam their cards down and like draw cards when they can draw cards you know like yeah and that's why most people lose when control mirrors to good players um, yeah they just start countering everything and so yeah you need to watch like i make this comment about limited all the time too people just like throw their removal and creatures away and limited all the time they just like cast their spells because they can mm -hmm. and it's just wild to me and i think it's because i used to only play control so like i come from a very patient background on that so i don't cast anything yeah, take, take shots, iron chin over here. Yeah, it's like quite common that the best use of a counter spell <laughs> is just letting something resolve. Yeah, and saving it. Yeah, remember the blowout story? We almost forgot. Oh no! I don't uh, yeah, so my friend told me this. Shout out to Ivan from Edmonton. Um, we based on the envy episode that we did two weeks ago, he messaged me being like, "Oh, that's a pretty good episode." And like, I have a funny story about trying to learn from a better player. Oh yeah. Okay. And so, this is our blowout of the week. So, uh, when Ivan was kind of new to Magic. Um, he was getting to know people around Edmonton and he got to know that I'm going to say Jim, I don't know his actual name, but he got to know that Jim was a pretty good player around Edmonton and Jim won a lot. And so, you know, he was watching his games trying to learn from him. And anyway, Ivan decides to go to a, I believe it was Oath of the Gate Watch sealed event. And so he's there, he plays his first round, whatever, and he's watching the, the end of Jim's match and he sees him board in a crumble to dust. And he's like, oh, this doesn't make much sense because, you know, there's not a lot of non-basics in Limited. This doesn't, I don't get why he did this. But, you know, somehow preemptively understanding our Envy episode, he's like, after the match, I'll ask him because, like, I know he's a good player. So there's probably some reason I don't understand. So Jim finishes playing his match and Ivan goes up and says, you know, hey, I was watching. I don't really understand why you board. Why'd you board in that crumble to dust? It doesn't seem very good. And Jim just gets, like, lividly angry. Like, well, what do you mean, man? Why are you asking me why I boarded this crumble? Come on. I don't, I don't know. Man. What, 
what what's your problem? Like, why? Because Ivan had mistaken him, and this wasn't Jim. It was just someone who looked kind of like him. And this was instead a new player who thought Ivan walked over to mock him, being like, oh, you parted and crumbled to dust, you freaking idiot. That's, that's not a good card. <laughs> <laughs> he's off on him for bullying a new player <laughs> but he's also a new player trying to learn as yeah, so he just thinks he's being made fun of by someone because he thinks you don't, you don't know who's new because you're also new <laughs> and so Ivan's like trying to apologize he's like oh sorry no I'm sorry I didn't mean it and the guy's just like mad right not having any of it and then they get paired next round and have to be cordial to each other <laughs> So yeah, oh, man. ask better players for advice, but like, make sure you're asking the right person. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all for joining the club this week. Make sure as always you check out wizardtower.com for all your magic single needs. Free shipping on singles in Canada and the U.S. Great content on uh, wizardtower.com. Uh, like this podcast and other articles and all that good stuff. And uh, as always, uh, shoot us like on Facebook. You can connect with us there. Shoot us a message. Uh, we're always like hearing from listeners, getting blowout stories. Um, we have an excellent response time. We do. <laughs> we do. Uh, you can also follow us at on Twitter at uh, DWC Podcast One. And um, however you listen to this podcast, whether it's on Podbean, iTunes, your podcast app, or just the internet, leave us a review, rate the podcast, share it with your friends. It is the best way to keep this podcast growing and bring it to new listeners. Thanks for listening. Later.